Welcome back to another video guys. So today we've got something new to try out, but before I get into that, I figured I'd show you the new shop setup. I just switched a few things around out here. So the first thing you guys will notice is the shelf that was over here. I moved to this side of the shop. Didn't really need to be in this corner. And the biggest reason why I switched things around was to get this workbench, which used to be in that corner, kind of in the middle of the shop here just easier to work with it right here. And I also moved the vise to the end of the workbench. Obviously it makes more sense with it being that way. And now I've got all this space to work my bikes. Pretty happy with this setup so far. So I've got this little plastic shelf with all my chemicals and oils, obviously a toolbox. And then over here is the 125. Got a couple bikes over here in the corner. Girlfriend's XR80, we'll be working on that thing. Got the pit bike, KLX 110, and then the summer toy, Yamaha Superjet. And all this shelving is for the merchandise on the website. So we've got dirt bike parts, hats, t-shirts, scotch Bright pads, all that kind of stuff. So what we're working with today is over here in this box. So let's open it up and check it out. What we have here is a plating kit from Caswell. I partnered up with them. And what we're gonna be doing is replating some of the hardware on the CR250. Now I've never done this before. I have no clue what some of this stuff is, but we're gonna be learning how to do this together. I'm gonna to go through, open it all up, get it figured out, do my research, and we'll get started. So the reason why I opted to replate instead of replace some of the hardware on this bike is because some of the larger bolts like the axles swing arm bolt, the linkage bolts down here, motor mount bolts, all that stuff isn't made anymore or it's really expensive to go buy. And I just love figuring out how to do things myself. I definitely take a lot more pride in my projects when they're done here at the shop. And then down the road, I've got this plating kit so I can restore as many bolts as I want. So I'm gonna read through this here manual and figure out what electroplating is all about. All right, so I just finished up with some research and reading, and I think I understand the concept of plating pretty good now. So let's talk about what plating is and why it needs to be done. So plating is basically transferring metal particles from a plate called the anode over to the part, which is called the cathode. And the plating protects the part from rust and corrosion, and that's why it needs to be done. So how we do this is by positively charging the plate and negatively charging the part. And in turn, that will attract the particles from the plate over to the part, and you'll end up with a finish similar to this. This is either zinc plated or nickel plated. Now I'm gonna discuss how to set up the tanks and the power supply. So it looks like we've got quite a bit going on here. We've got a crock pot of all things, but trust me, once I break it all down, it's gonna be pretty simple. So if you'd like to skip through the setup process and go straight to plating, go to the timestamp shown on the screen right now. Okay, first things first, we're gonna need to have a GFCI outlet to plug things into. That'll protect you from getting shocked. And then for safety equipment, pretty important to have a set of goggles. You wanna have gloves. Actually, we're not gonna be using latex. You wanna go with rubber gloves for this. And then, of course, a respirator. And the respirator needs to have OV and AG. OV stands for organic vapor and AG is acid gas. And it's really important to have a respirator that protects against those two things. So the first thing we're gonna set up here is the degreasing tank. When you buy the Caswell kit, it comes with a stuff called SP degreaser and you mix it with one and a half gallons of distilled water. Now we're gonna add in one pound of this degreaser powder, which is half the bag. Just gonna go ahead and mix this up real quick. Ideally, you'd like to use a wooden paint stick, but this is all I could find, so it'll have to do. And now we'll need to heat the degreaser to around 150 to 200 degrees. 
And actually, you know what I forgot? That's what I'll be using the uh, crock pot for. So it's kind of pointless to mix it up in this bucket. So here I've got the crock pot. Just picked this thing up from Walmart for like 20 bucks. And I believe on low or medium, it should get it to around 150 to 200. And that's what we're looking for. And this is where I'll dip the parts through or soak the parts in before I run them through the plating process. All right guys, so the degreaser setup is all done. And now I'm gonna move on to getting the plating tank ready to go. The first thing we'll need to construct for the plating tank is a bar which goes over the top of it. And then you hang the parts from that. We're going to build that out of this half inch copper pipe. So I'm gonna cut the pipe down to 14 inches. Sick cut, yo. Next up, we're gonna flatten out the last inch and a half of the bar with a hammer here. All right, I've got both ends of the bar flattened out here. They're not quite straight, but not a big deal. So what I'm gonna do now is put it on the edge of the table and bend each end over 90 degrees. All right, now let's check to see how this tank bar fits on the bucket. Not bad, that'll do. Next step is to add in one and a half gallons of distilled water into the bucket. One thing I should mention about the tank bar is it needs to be made out of something that's conductive since we'll be hooking up the power supply to it. So I went with copper tubing because it's cheap and easy to work with. Now we'll need to add the actual plating solution into the plating tank. So for part A, which is this fluid right here, we will need 13 ounces. And then part B is a like a crystal form. We'll need uh, 36 ounces. That'll be 36 ounces in weight. And then for the zinc brightener, which is this right here, another fluid, that will need half a teaspoon. And then we've already got one and a half gallons of distilled water in the tank. So I'm gonna measure out these materials and pour them in. So the amount of solution that was in this Part A bottle was already 13 ounces, but uh, I guess it didn't hurt to measure it out anyways. For part B, I'm gonna guess this is already 36 ounces. I'm gonna go ahead and wait here. Yep, 36 ounces. So I'm gonna pour the whole bag into the plating tank. Just gonna go ahead and mix this up with the stirring stick. Try not to breathe any fumes or splash it. If it gets in your eyes, it's probably not good. And last but not least is the zinc brightener. So it calls for half a teaspoon which is gonna be like not even a 10th of an ounce. So I'm just gonna add just a smidge to this tank. Just a little drip, that's all it takes. Now that the plating solution is ready to go, I'm gonna throw the lid back on while we get the anodes ready to go. So one thing to keep in mind with the plating solution is it will increase the amount of condensation that's in the air. So if you're doing a lot of plating, I would recommend doing it in a well-ventilated area or just doing it in a separate garage because that condensation could lead to issues with rusting of your tools and anything that's inside the shop. Now for the anodes, we're gonna cut a quarter inch piece all the way up or most of the way up and bend that up and hang it on the side of the tank here. So it shows right here in the manual what that looks like. So we're just gonna cut that piece up with a set of tin snips. Now I don't have any tin snips, so I'm gonna use this gnarly pair of scissors. That should work. So both plates should look something like that. It doesn't have to be pretty. Now I'm gonna set the anodes in the tank, but before I do that, the instructions say to wrap each anode with uh, rolled gauze. And this is the stuff that sticks back onto itself. And I'm not exactly sure why the uh, anodes need to be wrapped. I should probably look into that just for curiosity's sake. So the anodes are ready to go, but before I drop them in the tank, I'll need to connect them with a connecting wire here. 
So I built this out of just regular 14 gauge wire and then a set of alligator clips. And the wire needs to reach about halfway around the tank. So about that length right there is good. And I'm gonna set these anodes 180 degrees away from each other. I'm gonna drop it all the way in and then bend this tab that we cut over the edge of the tank. And then the other anode's gonna go on this side. Bend it over the lip of the tank. And then I'll take my wire with the alligator clips, clip it onto one, clip it on the other, and we are set. Now the last two things we'll need to drop in the tank are a pump, or it's like an agitator, and it's got a filter inside of it. So actually you'll need to pull the carbon filter. If you buy the casual kit, you'll need to pull the carbon filter out of it. Let me show you what, uh, what that is. So it's down inside of here. You wanna leave that carbon filter out. I should probably throw some gloves on for this. We've got that. And the other thing we'll need to drop in is called a bucket heater. So we'll need to heat the fluid to 110 degrees. This particular heater keeps it at 110 degrees. And I'll link this one down below in the description. So simply just drop this all the way to the bottom of the tank. All right, we've got the anodes, we've got the pump, we've got the heater. So time to heat up the uh, plating tank as well as the degreaser tank in the back there, the crock pot. I'm gonna get these warm and try my first part through here. And one more thing I need to mention with the plating tank is when you get it full of fluid, you need to take a Sharpie and mark on the side of the bucket the uh, level here. That way, as the level drops, you'll know how much to fill it back up. And like I was saying earlier, you wanna have everything plugged into a GFCI outlet. And I've also got a surge protector here. So gonna have a heater, a crock pot, the pump, and then the power supply all plugged in. Hopefully I don't trip a breaker. All right, so I've had these heaters going for about an hour now, and I'm gonna check the temp with this infrared heat gun. This should be around 110, 103.4, close enough. And this needs to be around 150, which I don't really see much steam coming out of there. So probably not close to that. 94. All right, I've got it on low right now. I'm gonna have to crank this up to high get it up to 150. In the meantime, I'm gonna cut a chunk of that brass pipe or a copper pipe and prep it. And that'll be my first test piece through the plating process. All right, before you start plating anything important, it's pretty crucial to have something to test out the process on. And with any process, whether you're painting, powder coating or plating, the surface preparation is everything. That counts for like 70, 80% of why your plating job will turn out good or will turn out like crap. So there's a variety of ways you can go about prepping the part. You could sandblast it, like with this uh, sandblaster I've got here. You could use sandpaper. Uh, let's see what else it says here. Like a nylon abrasive wheel, um, light buff and polish. You could use uh, polishing wheels. What I'll be using is a scotch bright wheel here on a buffing machine since that is what I'm most familiar with and I've had really good luck with them in the past. So that scotch bright wheel did a really good job cleaning this thing up. That's all it took to get this uh, part ready to go. So let's check this degreaser tank once again. And we're up to 153. So that is right where we need it. So next up, I'm gonna hang the part using some copper wire and let it sit in that degreaser tank for five minutes. All right, I've got my uh, copper tank bar. Just gonna wrap the copper wire around the bar. Got my test piece on the wire. Now I'm just making sure I have enough length on the wire to drop down into the plating tank, into the actual fluid. So it looks like it'll work pretty good right there, but it's a little long for the degreaser tank, but no big deal. And while that's soaking, I'm gonna set up a quick acid bath over here. So this is gonna be a 5% acid. 
meaning I'll be using two gallons of distilled water to 12 or 13 ounces of muriatic acid, and I'll be mixing it up in this bucket. Now this step is optional, but you might as well take every measure to make sure this process goes as good as possible. So the part's been soaking for a good five or six minutes. And what I'm gonna do next is spray it down with a spray bottle that has distilled water in it. And I'm gonna check for beading. So if the water beads up on the part, that means there's still some oil or dirt left on it and it needs to be soaked further. All right, I don't see any water beading on the part, so I'm gonna move on to the next step. And that next step is dipping the part in the acid bath for two to three seconds. And this is simply just etching the part. All right, before you drop in the tank, make sure you mist it off with the distilled water get that acid off of there. Before we start plating, we're gonna have to figure out how many amps we're gonna need from the power supply. And that is determined by the amount of square inches the part covers. So for zinc plating, you'll go 0.14 amps per square inch. Now luckily Caswell has this surface area calculator, so that way we can determine the surface area of the part we're working with. Cylinder, tube, there we go. And the tube we're working with, or the copper piping, is half inch diameter. So the radius is gonna be 0.25 inches. And then let's see, the length, let me measure it real quick. It is two and a half inches in length. So 2.5 and calculate. So we ended up with 3.92 square inches. So we're gonna take that 3.92 times it by the 0.14. So 3.92 times 0.14. We end up with 0.548. So we'll need 0.55 amps for this project. All right, time to get this baby all powered up. So we're gonna hook the positive side of the power supply up to this side of the plate. And then the negative side is going to go to the tank bar. And that will lead to the part. So got everything hooked up. And now we're gonna turn it on and adjust the amperage. So this button here is the output on off button. Can hit that. So now we're powered up and we're gonna be looking for 0.5488 amps. So this is the adjustment knob here. I'm gonna crank that down to 5488. So 548, that's gonna go up and down a little bit. We're set right there. Let's take a look inside the tank and see what's going on. And already you can see that test piece changing color. So we're gonna let it sit in there for 20 minutes Come and check on it and it should be done. Oh, and I almost forgot to plug in that pump. That's pretty important here. Get that stuff agitating in there. And guys, don't forget to wear some eye protection while you're doing this. It doesn't take much for the stuff to splash up and get in your eye and that's never good. So play it safe. All right, the 20 minutes is up. Let's take a look at this part. So as we're pulling it out, we're gonna spray it off with distilled water inside the bucket. That way we're keeping all of this plating fluid inside the tank and we're not washing it down the drain. So right now the plating looks pretty dull, but I'm gonna throw it on a polishing wheel and it should shine it right up. So on this side of the buffing machine, I've got a loose wheel and I'm gonna use a white rouge, they call it. And this should bring out the uh, zinc plating pretty good. After a quick buff, you can see the zinc plating came out pretty good. Got a nice shine to it. But ultimately, I would like to skip the polishing process. The part should come out of the plating tank looking just like this. Just because I'm curious, I'm gonna scrape on this test piece with a scalpel and see how strong the plating is. So I scraped on that pretty good with the knife and it just barely broke through the plating. 
So I would say that stuff is pretty strong. Should hold up really good on hardware. So the nice thing about this Caswell kit is it comes with this manual, which is a huge resource. Pretty much has every scenario for uh, troubleshooting here. So with this case, I had a burnt plate. It was like a dark gray. And the cause of that could be too much current. So I may have to lower the amperage. May have uh, calculated that um, surface area wrong. So on the next test piece, I'm gonna make some adjustments. And one more thing I'm gonna to try too is adding a little bit more brightener to the solution. The next batch of parts will be the brake pedal bolt, shock bolts, and kickstarter bolt. And the first step in the prep process is to clean them up with the scotch Brite wheel here on the grinder. All right, so the bolts are prepped and ready to go. And I had this random thought of something cool I could do with these bolts is smooth out the heads a little bit. So I've got this pretty cool sanding drum. I'll show you here. This is like a rubber expanding drum and it's got a sandpaper belt on it. This thing works really good for uh, smoothing out any type of metal. So you can see some of the casting marks on these bolts. I'm just gonna hit it really quick with that sanding drum and it should clean it up really nicely. Man, these bolts turned out super cool. Wish I could leave them looking just like that. Got the bolts wired up here. So now I'm just gonna drop these parts in the degreaser tank. I'm gonna do a little bead test with these parts. Everything looks good with that. Just gonna hang them on the bar real quick. And into the acid they go. And now they're ready for the plating tank. So I did all my math for this batch of parts and I'll need 1.4 amps. 1.4. I'm gonna run this batch for 10 minutes, flip it around 180 degrees, run it for another 10, and hopefully it turns out a lot better than last time. So I think I'm finally starting to get this stuff figured out. Originally this batch came out with a gray dull looking finish, but I spent a few hours doing some research and just a lot of trial and error and I think I got the process down pretty good. Still need some more fine tuning though. But overall, pretty happy with how these ones turned out. Hopefully I can replicate that for the rest of the bolts on the bike. So the changes I made were mostly with this plating tank. Oh dang, I need to fill up this level a little bit more. But the first thing I did was heat up the tank and then pull this heater out. I believe the finish on this heating element was affecting the finish on my parts and then I pulled these anodes out, clean them up on the scotch Brite wheel. And the last adjustment I made was with the amperage. So instead of calculating the surface area of the part and setting the amperage based off of that, what I did instead is set the part in the plating tank, hook everything up, turn the amperage down pretty far, and then adjust it upwards from there. And as soon as the part has bubbles coming off of it, that indicates the plating process is taking place. That's like the perfect um, setting for the amperage. And anything above that is burning the plating and anything below that, the plating process isn't happening at all. So I had really good luck with doing that instead. And for the next run of parts, I'm gonna pull the motor mount bolts off the bike. They're a bit corroded and rusted and give those a shot. I just finished up prepping all this hardware on the buffing machine with the scotch Bright wheel, and now it is time to hang it. So this time around, I'll be using 18 gauge wire instead of the 12 gauge I was using before. That 12 gauge wire was just way too thick and it was super hard to wrap around bolts and stuff. Now I've got everything hung. That wire made it so much easier. This stuff I just grabbed at Ace Hardware. All right, so I've got a couple of these bolts set up in the plating tank. I decided that the amount of parts I had set up was a little too much. I'm just gonna try to do small batches at a time. I think it makes it easier. So one more thing I've been trying is hooking up the wires opposite. So negative to the anodes and positive to the tank bar. And what this is gonna do, as soon as I turn the uh, power supply on 
it's gonna remove any of the old plating that's left over. So you wanna make sure you have all the old plating gone before you throw a new plate on. I'm gonna let this stuff deplate for about five minutes. All right, I've had that stuff deplating. I'm gonna switch these wires back over. Then I'm gonna turn this thing on. I'm gonna start at one amp, slowly go up from there. And while I'm turning this up, I'm watching the parts inside of here waiting for little air bubbles to start going to the surface. You can see they're turning gray, like a dull gray, but as soon as I get to the right amperage, they'll start to plate and have a shiny finish to them. So I've got it set at three amps, which I thought was a little high, but you can see there is some bubbles coming to the surface and around the wire, the foam, that indicates that the plating process is taking place. So I'm gonna let these go for about five minutes. All right, let's take a peek and see how these things turned out. Holy crap, that's awesome. Exactly what I was after. After I'm done with the plating process, I'll hang the parts up and let them air dry for a couple hours before touching them with bare hands. If you touch them with your bare hands, the oil in your skin will actually react with the plating and you'll end up with black fingerprints on the parts. So I think I'm getting this process figured out pretty good. This is my latest batch, turned out awesome. And what I'm trying over here is I've got a bunch of uh, washers and nuts here that I sandblasted, and I'm gonna see how the sandblasting works with the plating process. All right, I've got the hardware done that was previously sandblasted, and you can kind of see it's got like a rough, somewhat textured finish on it. So typically with plating, the shinier the part is beforehand, the better the outcome is. So if you have a sandblasted part, it's gonna have like that rough textured feel to it, even after plating. You can see there's a big difference here between this nut, which was scotch brighted beforehand, and then this hardware here, which was sandblasted. So if you're going for the textured look, sandblasting is the way to go before or if you want the shiny, almost chrome look, then I would recommend scotch writing or uh, polishing up your hardware before. So one issue I was running into is this like dull finish. I mean, it looks shiny, but you can see on the head of this bolt, it's got like almost like a water spot. And I tracked that down to not having enough agitation in the tank. As soon as I turned that pump on, that issue went away so keep that in mind guys oh and one more thing i've noticed that makes a big difference with plating is how many wires you have hanging from the tank bar if you have one it'll plate a lot more efficiently but say if you have two or three or more it is a little harder to get the right amperage for plating and you end up with a gray dull finish this is the next batch that i'll be plating we've got swing arm bolts axles linkage bolts, a couple small things over here. I'm really glad I decided to plate this stuff because the swing arm bolt was already starting to rust and I hadn't even got the bite together. Previously, I had scotch brighted this swing arm bolt and just left it bare. So that's exactly why you need to plate stuff or put some coating over bare steel. It'll rust right away. So as I'm walking out into the shop, I'm starting to realize this is looking like a meth lab out here. Imagine if someone walked in and saw this whole setup. Another issue I've ran into is getting a solid connection all the way to the part. So you'll notice I have some corrosion here on the tank bar. And if you let that build up, the connection will go away. So when you don't have a good connection, you'll notice on the power supply, it reads zero. And as soon as I slide this down to a good connection right there, it'll jump back up. And something else I've run into as well is using old wire that already has plating built up on it and it doesn't allow a solid connection right to the part. So if you're having issues getting a solid plate, maybe try starting with a fresh wire too. And for the tank bar, just occasionally hit it with Scotch-Brite and clean it up. So another way you can test to see if you have the right amperage for the part is by pulling the part out of the solution slightly. Let me turn this power supply on and I'm gonna hold the wire lift up the bar slightly and you'll see that fizzing as it comes out of the water. So you just want a slight fizzing, you don't want it bubbling out of control or else that'll indicate too high of an amperage. Got the next batch of hardware all prepped up with the scotch right wheel. This stuff should turn out mint. So I'm in the middle of plating this latest batch of parts and this batch that just came out has like a white, blotchy kind of haze to it 
And a couple things you can do to help combat that is add in more zinc brightener to the tank. I would say every five to 10 batches through. And if that doesn't help, another thing to try is throw a test piece in the plating tank for 20 minutes and that should remove any impurities or contamination in the tank. One thing you can do if you end up with a white haze on your plating is grab some polish, pretty much any metal polish will do, and uh, it should brighten that zinc right up and add another layer of protection to it. I was having some issues with plating some of these larger bolts like the axles and swing arm bolt and so I called the guys at Caswell and they gave me some great ideas on how to fix that. So originally this front axle came out with a dull gray finish, just wasn't getting enough amperage to uh, plate the whole thing. And what they were saying is when you have a bolt that's hollow on the inside, you need to block that off in order for only the outside to be plated. When you have it hollow or open, it's gonna to wanna to plate the inside and the outside. And this power supply just doesn't have enough amps to plate the whole thing. And what I've got set up here for the swing arm bolt is silicone plugs on the end. These are plugs for powder coating. I had the same setup on this front axle and look how this thing turned out. It is absolutely beautiful. So glad I got that resolved. The guys at Caswell are super helpful. And one more thing to keep in mind is all the old plating on the bolt needs to be removed. So I prepped this with a scotch Bright wheel. Looks like all the plating is off of it, but there's still some plating embedded in the material and you need to soak or dunk the part in muriatic acid for a couple minutes. And once it stops fizzing, that means all of the old plating is off of there and it's ready for a new plate. Oh, and I set up another tank here. The bucket wasn't quite big enough for these larger bolts. And so I just got this plastic tub and it seems like it's working pretty good. I'm gonna walk you guys through the whole process one last time. So I'm just gonna dunk this part in the degreaser tank for a couple minutes. Then I'm gonna do a water break test, spraying it with distilled water and looking for water that's beating up on the part. And we're gonna dip it in the acid bath. So you wanna leave it in here until it stops fizzing. There's a little bit of fizzing going on. So I'll probably leave it in here for two to three minutes. After spraying off the part with the spray bottle, going to hang it here in the plating tank. And we are ready to plate. Just gotta turn the power supply on. Got it cranked up to four and a half amps. So we'll see what happens with it. You can see some fizzing going on here. So I'm gonna let this plate for about five minutes and then check on it. Just pulled this thing out of the plating tank washed it off in a bucket of fresh water and as you can tell this thing turned out sweet pretty stoked with how this is working out when you're doing larger bolts like this rear axle you definitely want to make sure you have plenty of zinc brightener in the tank and you want to have that fluid temperature up to 110 degrees those two things are really important so i just finished up with the rear axle and it didn't turn out quite as shiny as the other ones you can see underneath the plating there's some pitting here so this rear axle is pretty rusted beforehand, so keep that in mind. If you have a really rusted bolt, you're gonna see some pitting like you see right here. It's gonna show through the zinc plating when you're all finished up. I'm all finished up with plating, and I'm pretty stoked with how this stuff turned out. Now it's a bit of a learning curve to learn the plating process, but trust me, it's all worth it. So the cool thing about zinc plating is you have color options after you're done plating. You could add a black, a yellow, this right here I have is a yellow chromate. And as it says here on the can, I'm gonna mix one to two ounces with one gallon of distilled water. And we should have a finish somewhat similar to this bolt here. In order for the chromate to work, it needs to be heated up to 85 degrees. So I'm gonna drop this heater in the bucket for about 15 minutes and get it up to temperature. I'm gonna go ahead and check the temperature of the solution here. 91.9 a little warm but that's okay so the part that i'm going to try the yellow chromate on is going to be the shock bolt so i'm going to dip it in the acid bath for a few seconds here kind of swirl it around get that acid activating and then i'm going to spray it off with the water bottle that's filled with distilled water 
Now we're ready to dip the bolt into the chromate solution here, but you definitely want to wear a respirator for this. This solution is pretty nasty. Before I throw this respirator on, I'm going to explain how it works a little bit. So you just swirl the bolt around in the solution for about 20 to 30 seconds until you get the color that you're wanting and then pull it out and dip it in fresh water. Man, I love how that turned out. Color looks sweet. So I'm gonna let this dry for a couple hours and actually when it's fully dry, more color should come out of it. You'll be able to see the blue, purple, and yellow hues. And one more thing to mention too, this chromate actually adds another layer of protection against rust and corrosion. So pretty sweet stuff. And there's another option for how you can finish hardware too. If you don't like any of the chromates or this polished look, you can add a brush finish to the bolt. What we're gonna do here is come over to the buffing machine. It's got a fine Scotch-Brite wheel on it. And we're just gonna apply light pressure to the bolt and you don't want to add too much pressure and go through the plating, but just a little bit of pressure will end up with a brushed finish. It actually looks pretty cool. And I'll actually show you what it looks like when you burn through the plating. And uh, this is kind of a durability test as well. Now to give it a brushed finish, just gonna apply some light pressure here. Now you can see the difference between the chrome-like finish and the brushed finish right there. I actually kind of prefer the brush finish over the chrome finish. So pretty cool stuff. Now I'm gonna apply heavy pressure to the bolt and you'll see what it looks like when you burn through the plating. So I held it on the wheel for a good solid three, four seconds. And you can see that little color difference there, right there that is all the way through the plating. So you definitely don't want to do that. All right, what finish do you guys prefer? We've got a yellow chromate, regular zinc plated finish, or zinc plated with a brush finish. Let me know down in the comment section. So now I'm all finished up with plating and I decided to leave everything just with the standard zinc finish. I like the yellow chromate, look pretty cool, but I don't think it would fit that great with this bike. And as far as the uh, chrome-like finish, I'm usually not a big fan of that stuff. You know, I like things more um, plain or like a, with a brush finish. But for this stuff, I think it'll be a nice subtle touch. So I bolted a few of these uh, bolts on. Did the ones for this cover here, the nut for the cylinder. And I think they look sweet. Just that nice, bright, shiny finish is uh, Nice addition to the bike. I tell you what, it's all in the small little details when you're building stuff like this. Did the bolts for the master cylinder cap. Did the Kickstarter bolt as well. This stuff just adds a nice little pop to the bike. And like I was talking about at the beginning of the video, surface preparation is like 70 or 80% of how your finish turns out. If you want a nice bright finish on your hardware, you gotta start with a shiny bolt. And so these scotch Brite wheels have been working really good for me for prep. This one over here is a rougher wheel. I use that for heavier rust, um, smoothing out bolts. This side has a finer wheel. And this is the one that's gonna give you that nice shiny finish before you run the bolt through the plating process. And I actually sell these over on my website. I'll link them down below for you guys. And one more thing I didn't mention before in the video is some of these bolts have like a recessed head and you can't really get in there with a scotch Brite wheel. So what I was doing is cutting up an old wheel kind of in quarter or like fold it up and so that way you can get inside the head of the bolt here and uh, clean that out and that makes a big difference in getting the head of the bolt looking really good. All right, so now that I'm all finished up with plating and trying to learn the whole process of it, I thought I would share a few thoughts on the whole thing in general. So first things first, is it actually worth doing plating at home, having your own setup? It all depends on how much you're going to be doing. If you're always working on bikes or cars, always needing to be plating hardware, it is definitely worth having your own setup at home that you can just fire up and use at your own will. 
you're only gonna be doing one bike build, one car project, just like one batch of parts, it's definitely not worth having your own setup just because the initial cost of it and then the time to learn the whole process. Like I said, if you're only doing one small batch, I would go and send that up to someone who's really good at it. And then as far as how long it takes to actually learn the process, um, I spent probably two or three days just tinkering around, trying to learn the ins and outs of it. And uh, so if you follow this video, learn from all my mistakes, follow the guide. If you're purchasing the Caswell kit, it comes with that manual and that thing is just a huge resource for troubleshooting. Um, you can definitely cut your learning time down to about a day or even shorter than that. So how long does it take to actually plate hardware and have a good outcome? Um, I would say in a whole day, I could plate all the hardware on this bike. So really does it take a ton of time once you learn the whole process and really get things dialed in. But like I said, learning the process is pretty time consuming and you're gonna need to invest some time right there. And one big thing with plating is you gotta protect yourself. You gotta be wearing gloves, you gotta have a respirator on, you gotta be wearing goggles or glasses at the very least. You definitely don't want that stuff uh, going into your lungs, going into your eyes, or absorbing into your skin. So my thoughts on the Casual kit, it's a really good kit, comes with a lot of great information, the team over at Caswell is very helpful. I called in a few times to get help with stuff and uh, they were always really forthcoming with information, just super helpful. Um, you do have to go buy a lot more than uh, just the kit itself. The biggest thing, you have to have a power supply or a rectifier, they call it. That's gonna be one of your bigger expenses. The one I have was about 180. Those are available from Caswell as well. Uh, the kit itself, was I think it runs for about 250 and then I had to buy about 50 or 60 dollars worth of extra so I needed copper pipe copper wire a few buckets spray bottle just a bunch of little stuff and I'll actually make a full list of everything I needed uh, besides the kit and the rectifier and I'll link it or I'll put it all down below in the description so for less than $500 you can get set up and ready to go plating if you think about it, I mean, $500 seems like a lot up front, but when you consider how much it costs to uh, send out one batch to a, a plating company, that could easily be two or $300. And I know some of you guys out there would want to uh, turn this into a business. If you watch through this video, learn from all my mistakes, put everything into practice, I guarantee you within a week, you could be set up plating and have the process perfected, where you could be comfortable taking other people's parts, other people's hardware, plating them and doing it as a business. So just something to think about for you guys out there, or you could just do it on the side to recoup the cost of the kit. So to wrap everything up in a nutshell, plating is kind of frustrating to learn. It takes some time, but trust me, once you get it dialed in, it's actually a lot of fun and it's a huge part of any project. And just the pride of doing your own work too, that's huge. Well guys, that's gonna be it for this video. I know it was a long one, and I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned a thing or two. If you guys would like to support the channel, I do have those cleaning wheels I showed in the video over on my website, primemx.com. I'll have a link down below. I do have apparel over there as well, some hats like this one here, t-shirts, long sleeves, uh, stickers, so definitely go head over there and check out the website. And make sure you guys stay tuned for the next video. We're gonna be putting all this hardware back on the bike. I know I kind of uh, went backwards on the build, it seems, you know, took some stuff apart to uh, plate some hardware, but trust me, this thing is gonna be going back together. Gonna be getting a bunch of new stuff on it. Got some really cool parts that came in a couple weeks ago. So I want you guys to stay tuned for that video coming out soon. Thanks for watching guys and until next time, keep it prime.